Hey guys, this is a uh, emergency edition of the No Fear podcast. I say emergency because I was uh, I, I was watching a a little video that my good buddy Matt, who's on on the call right now, filmed about a book that he released. Now, I had forgotten that at one point you and I were taunting each other in the mornings, writing each other. I had, I had, I, I tapped out, got busy with other shit and I forgot you were on this mission to write your book. And I got so excited that you were releasing. I got goosebumps right now thinking about that. And I got so excited. And I, then I was blown away by the video, which will link when I put this out for my audience. So they'll see that. And I said, immediately I contacted you. I said, you got to come on the no fear podcast because ironically, your podcast and the name of the book is 10,000 no's. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then we're the no fear and the connection between fear, fear management, 10,000 no's and everything, but I'll end up talking for a half an hour. I know you, you got to get to some meetings, but Maddie, tell us, tell us about the book, what inspired it. And, uh, uh, and oh my God, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> well, first of all, first of all, thank you. When I have somebody like you, who's doing this for me, it's that kind of blows my mind in and of itself. And that's right. We did have a lot of, uh, I think we were kind of taunting each other on Instagram, maybe with right, like pictures right. of us with the computer at like four in the morning. Right. Um, and uh, just so you feel better about yourself, I was, I was working on a screenplay that's kind of on the back burner. So I'm not, uh, it's not like I got everything that I wanted to do, but the book I did uh, really, I'm, I'm, happy about it because it, it the way it came about um, is really an example of the stuff that I talk about on the podcast, which is, you know, kind of do your thing, follow your passion, do it well, care about it, and people will come out of the woodwork and help you. And that's what happened. Uh, one of my guests who I, I didn't know about him prior to meeting him, but a guy that I played lacrosse with in college reached out and said, there's this guy, John Gordon, who is a best-selling author and a business leader. And he wrote my favorite business book. You guys should, you know, get together. He's got a podcast. You've got a podcast. He played lacrosse at Cornell. You played at Boston mm -hmm. College, blah, blah. We met, we hit it off. Months later, he asked me to help talk to his daughter about acting. She was considering going into acting. And I sat and talked with her. And like a week after, without thinking about it, I had written something. It was kind of a shorter ebook. And I just sent it to him. I said, hey, you know, uh, your daughter, my, this is kind of the stuff that I told her about. Here you go. Literally, that's it. Wasn't strategy, wasn't thinking what this is going to lead to. He, the next day, get, I get a text back. He says, I love this. Change this, move this, email my publisher. And Two months later, I meet with the publisher. Three months later, I'm writing the book. Wow. And I got a book. And it, but, but it sounds simple. But the thing that I discovered recently, I went back. I was kind of cleaning out my computer. I have a file in my computer that was the beginnings of a book that would talk about the lessons I've learned, being told no as an actor and all the, the ups and downs. 2013. And one of the, I said, possible titles, and I had a list of like nine or 10 titles. One of them was 10,000 no's. That right. predates the freaking podcast by four years. That's so I cool. didn't even know it was in there. You know what I mean? It, that, that's what's crazy about this is you, you plant these seeds way back when, and that you don't know when they're going to come to, you know, break through the earth and come out. And it, it just happened to, and then the book, like, when I told author friends of mine how quickly I was, they wanted it. I, I really put myself with the publisher. I put myself, I painted myself into a corner because I had this show that ironically, I'm back in Brooklyn now about to reshoot. It, it got paused for seven months, but I had that and I wanted to time it with the thing. So I said, okay, by the end of the year, I wrote the book really, it was pretty, the initial writing was very quick, but I think, the reason I was able to do that with this particular book is because it's kind of, I've been living it for, right. it's, it's, it's almost like I just put what was in my head for so long down into the computer. And, and so it, it, it wasn't, it, there wasn't, um, 
it, it was just like, once I said go, I went, you know? It's crazy serendipity because you probably would not, had there not been uh, COVID and the shutdown, there's no way you could write a book that quick. Uh, no, untrue, untrue. I wrote it before COVID. No, I really? finished it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I finished it. So it's been done. The the majority of it was done by the beginning of the year. And oh, then wow. now they've been doing that. all the, you know what I mean? So it, yeah. it was, it was crazy. I just had a, I had a, you know. So I've got several friends who are published authors and, and that timeline for you know, from introduction to, to deal is, is uh, insane. And it's pr probably, uh, like if you wrote a script about that, it'd be thrown out because everyone go, well, that would never happen. That's a bullshit script. Nobody gets that, that happened uh, that quickly. So, so congrats on that. Um, let's talk a little bit more. So my audience, as you know, because, <clears throat> you know, you, you, we become friends and you follow my stuff and you get my newsletter and you know what I'm into. I'm into personal safety and self-defense and, and, um, and of course, the, the, the fear management is, is to me the basis of everything. Uh, if you can't manage your fear, you're never going to be an actor. You're never going to throw a palm strike to defend yourself. I mean, at the end of the day, when, when the shit hits the fan, it's all about managing fear. Uh, the, you know, the origin stage fright is managing fear. The, you know, that rocking chair chest is managing fear. And what I got from that, the, 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 the little promo that I saw in the book, um, Immediately, it resonated with me because 10,000 knows the, the resiliency needed to go through the 10,000 knows and the rejection and to believe, still believe in yourself is really all about managing fear. There's a real spiritual connection between what my life's work is about and, and, and certainly what, you know, uh, your, your, you know, uh, parallel mission because you're a professional actor and that's and that's what you love but i don't know if you realize this and it may be why you dig my stuff that you have been learning how to manage fear for ten thousand reps and beyond to get yeah. to just here yeah you know I, so i was talk, so talk to my audience about that so most of my audience is mostly law enforcement military uh uh, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, you know, CrossFit, serious athletes. That's, you know, of course there's other people, but those are the people that are attracted to this audience, you know? So, so, you know, and I'm not trying to sell your book. I'm trying to promote your message, but why would, why would a cop or a soldier or somebody, you know, read this book? Right. But what right. can we learn? Well, from this? First of all, just a little side note, I want to shout out to your audience because the, the role I'm playing right now is I'm, I'm the, the head of the gang unit. It's uh, it's early 90s Boston. It's a show City on a Hill with Kevin Bacon. So I went, I did a ride along with those guys and who I loved and 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 I'm watching like this whole week, you know, I've been here, you know, I'm 3000 miles away from my family. So I have a lot of time. I'm watching a lot of police documentaries and just so much respect for people putting their lives on the line for the rest of us every day. You know, I don't do that for my job. I pretend I'm doing that, you know, but they're actually doing it. So thank you for your service. Military, same thing. I've got, I've got friends in both. Um, so that's just, that's just one, but the, the reason they would, you, you know, one thing I was thinking about kind of just before we were getting on this call was, I was like, why, why do I like Tony? Like what, cause you and I hit it off. We, we got introduced through Jay Perugia. We, we were at a lunch at, um, in San Diego. We, we sat down with a group of people and you were actually kind of grumpy when I first met you. I was like, who is this guy? And then we sat next to each other. We started talking and like immediately we had a connection. And I, I think what it is that why I respond to your stuff. And I think you respond to mine is that on the surface, we do seemingly different things. You know, you are all about uh, it's, it's, it's physical safety and protection and awareness. And what I'm talking about is more, you know, what I get into a lot on my podcast and what I've had to get into in my career is uncertainty of employment and uncertainty of, of everything. You know, where am I going to be? Look at me right now. I didn't know when I was coming back to the show, I'm with my family now, boom, I'm 3000 miles away. I got here thinking I was done 
in mid December, I found out at my fitting, I'm not done till mid February. My kids are back there, don't, you know? So it's, there's uncertainty all the time, even now. So I think where you and I really cross over a lot and, and why I, I dug you immediately, you boil what you're doing. The backdrop happens to be self-defense, but underneath it, it's situational awareness. It's management of fear. And it's kind of, the, it's the same thing in a different backdrop for me. You know, I, I have stories in the book. It's not all about acting, but I do have stories of stuff that happened on the set of Sopranos when I was 30 years old and I'm with James Gandolfini and I'm, you know, I had been acting for seven years at that point, but it was my first big gig. And, you know, you're on that set with that guy and he's a huge talent and, and happens to be a huge dude as well. Like, you know, you're 30, you're like, holy crap, here I am with Tony Soprano. And stories about that, stories about my first day on set on the West Wing, where I'm, I'm leading the charge down hotel corridors, leading the scene with Jimmy Smiths and Brad Whitford and Janine Garofalo and Terry Polo and political jargon, you know, machine gun fire coming out of my mouth. That takes managing of fear. That takes preparation. It's kind of the same. The, the, the stuff I believe in is the same as, as what you believe in. It's just being applied to a different, a slightly different field. So I, I think they would, you know, maybe, maybe your audience would be like, I don't give a shit about this actor. Right. Like who cares? They, they could, I, that's, and that's fine, but they may find, you know, uh, parallel narratives to what they do. And I also talk a lot about, uh, you know, sports stuff from growing up. Which, you know, I played football and lacrosse. I played lacrosse on the division one level. And I, I get into a lot of that because I, I actually don't think I was a very good athlete, but I, I was a, a grinder and I cared and I could take a hit and get back up. And so a lot of that is in the book as well. And I didn't plan it, but it just, you know, it came out, you know, I, I, I think if, if I can interject here, uh, yeah. you know, as you're saying that, because, uh, you know, it was kind of like I threw you under the bus there. Why should a cop or a soldier, you know, get read this book from this actor? And, and you brought out what I wanted you, what I what I intuitively knew you would bring out. So I want to kind of like circle back around and share this. Regardless of who you are life is filled with uncertainty and life is filled with rejection. I think it's the message and, and because you're a good human, which is why we're friends. And I think that underneath all the other stuff, you know, uh, uh, um, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go back and check my diary and find out why I was grumpy that day, but, uh, the, the day we met, but the, uh, the, the, um, at the end of the day, I'm a good person. I want the best for people. I want the best for my family. I, I, you know, as an example, here's a paradox, something that most people don't even know about. I've, I've voiced it a couple of times, but most people, if they look at me and they just look at me standing there or hitting something or talking about, it, they go, oh, this guy loves violence. I abhor violence. I don't look at most violence. People send me videotapes. Look at this guy did. Look at it. I don't even watch them. I go, thank you. They don't even know I've never watched them. I don't need to watch it. It sickens me. It's why I study violence because it sickens me. I, I want to understand it so that I'm never a victim of it. And I want to share that. And that's why my focus is all on, on avoiding it, but to avoid it, you know, um, you know, uh, Bruce Lee wrote in, in one of his books and I, I think he, he, he was, he borrowed it from some Zen, you know, samurai writer that if you want to, rid yourself of a disease, you must become one with the disease. And, and uh, talking about the study, and we spell it, and I think he did too, dis-ease, like with a hyphen. I'm ill at ease with this. So if you can't, for you as an actor, recognize, okay, this is that uncertainty here. This is this fear, whether it's going to an audition, am I gonna get this, is this, is this show, this show gonna be picked up, you know? Um, because you could whiteboard a whole, what, is that, what does that mean? Well, you know, most people who don't understand what you're going through see like acting as an ego thing, or you're pretending to, no, that's, that's, your, that's your fucking job. You love it in the same way I love teaching self-defense, you love acting. 
And every month I look at my, my numbers, my courses, my this and that, and there's uncertainty. Forget COVID, you know, where 15 courses get canceled like that, right? And you're like, okay, I might lose everything. Holy shit. Yeah. So what I want everyone listening to this do is it's not about your job title. It's about who you are as a human and understanding that in life, there's going to always be uncertainty and rejection and the ability for you to continue towards your North Star and what you believe in, whether you're a cop, whether you're a soldier, whether you got to go back to your, your, your shitty boss who doesn't give a shit, but you want to do the right thing. That's rejection. That's uncertainty. That's rejection. And so what I'm hoping, I haven't read the book yet, um, uh, the, uh, is, and I know it just because you're a good person that that's the messaging around it. It's not like war stories of, you know, uh, you know, no. this, could you believe makeup took five hours today? You know, it's like, no, no, it's no like, I don't, yeah. <laughs> so, so that, so that's what I wanted to share with that. And that you brought that out and inspired that in me, that, that the reason we want to read this book is it's about the grind. It's about the grit. It's about the resiliency. Yeah. And, and one of the things that, I, I say right at the top, I may even say it in the introduction, the thing that I was uneasy with, and particularly when I'm talking to an audience of men and women that put themselves on the line every day, I'm like, you know, you, you, you just ask yourself, you, you want to tell your story and you want to be, you know, proud of your story. And I am. And then there's the flip side where I'm going, hmm, you know, I'm this, I'm this, 40 something year old white dude writing about 10,000 no's in a world of people that are, have had a lot less privilege than I've had. And you feel uneasy about it. I'm going, well, who's going to, who's going to give a shit really. And th there are a couple of things about that. One, I, because I've sat down with so many people in all walks of life on the podcast, it's backed with, tidbits and quotes from them, including yourself. I, there's a Tony Blower quote in there, and there may be even a little something about you. Um, and other people, you know, and I say it right off the bat, I go, look, this is, there are plenty of people, I'm writing a book about rejection and overcoming adversity and all that. And there are plenty of people out there, many of whom I've sat down with who have, you know, friend of mine, New York City firefighter who was run over by a bus and given a 1% chance to live, came back and ran a, a Mar New York City marathon and did an Ironman. You know, it, it's Amazing. people like that, that I'm humbled by. And I go, look, I'm not putting myself on that plane. However, in my own little realm, I have you know, I've, I've chosen to put myself in this profession. Nobody put a gun to my head. I, this is my choice. Can I, can I, can I, can I, jump yeah, 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 yeah. Jump I got to interrupt you because you use the word privilege and, 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 and you're comparing, contrasting. And I, and I know you're, you're, you know, there's, there's true humility in that, but I want to say something. Do you, do you know Mark Chen? Mark Chang? Oh yeah. Is he Dr. Ch Dr. Chen? Yeah. Is he the one? I yeah. So yeah. He's, a, he's a, he's, he's, he's a buddy of mine. I interviewed him and within the first five minutes, he talked about how lucky he was, how, how, how grateful he is because he's so lucky. He, he's so lucky. And I, I stopped him like in the beginning of the podcast. I said, if you use the word that you're that lucky again, I'm going to jump through here like in the matrix and punch you in the throat. <clears throat> Stop saying that you were, that you were lucky. Um, and let me tell you why. And, and let, me, let me tie this back to, to what you were saying. Every time I teach, I, I, I teach five days a week now, right? And on Zoom. And I remind people, nobody gets up in the morning and goes, you know, yesterday was a pretty good day. I hope today sucks because I want to develop my, my thick skin. I want to develop resiliency. I want to get comfortable with adversity. That's, you have no choice. And you could quote like stoic, philosophers and do whatever you want. And I just want to say to you that, that it's, it's your presence and your, just that you're a down to earth, good human that you can recognize, holy shit, that guy was run over by a bus. And like, I was complaining yesterday about the traffic. Oh my God. Like, like 
that's fine. But I also want to share with you and everybody out there, like, like when I do my class, I go, I'll go, how many of you were talking about like, like how fear creates doubt, doubt creates hesitation, hesitation creates procrastination. Now you've consumed a bunch of time and time is the only thing that you cannot regenerate. And so for all intents and purposes, you just mugged yourself if you understand that. You know, so you're like, what? I go, yeah, why would you mug yourself? And if you ask yourself, like when you're sitting there biting your nails or doodling and worrying about shit because of fear, you're mugging yourself because at the end of your life, you can't get time back. That's the one thing that's a constant for all of us. So people are like looking at me and I go, so what am I saying? I'm saying that when your tooth starts to bother you, did you immediately dial the dentist, get him on speed dial because you love calling your dentist and go, man, I hope I have root canal because I've never experienced root canal. No, what you probably did is you waited maybe 10 days and it got worse and worse. And then the dentist said to you, why did you wait so long? Right? Same thing with, with uh, like something medical, same thing with something financial. So where somebody finally is there and they're going, why did you wait so long? Why didn't you come to me sooner? Because fear creates doubt, doubt creates hesitation, hesitation can create procrastination. Procrastination unchecked becomes fixation and fixation unchecked becomes non-clinical anxiety. And now we've just mugged ourselves for an hour, a month or a year or whatever. And so I'm off on a little tangent here because I, I don't want you to at all, if I can as a friend say to you, like you have no, we, it's not about privilege. It's you were born and you're gonna make the best life you can for yourself or your family. And there should zero be zero guilt or, or, or um, uh, uh, even a nano moment of thinking you know, I was kind of lucky here that I was born like this. We all have. No, it. I just, I think I just mention it because when you're, you know, you're talking to particularly a group of, you know, military, uh, police officers, people that are deal. Th this is all I'm saying. Not, and and I believe you're right. And I think I used to be way more apologetic about everything. And I think right. this book has actually helped me own Good. my story. But what yeah. I only bring it up because it's a different you know, crowd. It's a hardcore yeah. crowd. Well, no, no, just because, like, look, as an actor, you always talk about like what are the stakes? You got to make the stakes higher. I'm talking to a bunch of people whose lives are just higher stakes physically than yeah. the rest of us. They just are. And and you have to qualify in a way to go like to just their normal question if i were them is like why the fuck am i going to listen to this actor right right the fuck is he and what has he been through really and so i'm saying it's it's through my prism it's all i could do is my own experience but then it's also backed by people who have been through more har harrowing versions right. me, of what i've been through so that, that i just bring it up to to give you the context that what i like about it is i think in the way you do I think I take my world and my experiences and I put them out there. This is just how I've always been as a person. I, I put them out in a way that I think a bunch of different people can understand it and, mm -hmm. and relate to it. And, and I don't know where that comes from. If it's from my parents, if it's in my DNA, privilege. I was like, you're you just know, privileged. That's all. I'm just privileged. Yeah. No, that no. was the, no, yeah, but that, no, good, that was good, the guy good, that good I reframe. was. Good reframe. Cause I misunderstood it slightly. Uh, uh, but what I said, I think still has value for people to hear, uh, but no good reframing and, and fair enough because it's easy. My audience is a different audience and it's like, why should I listen to this guy? And and that's, they should listen. They should listen to you because you're my friend. And, and, <laughs> and, and listen to me because Tony Blower. Tony's right. going to spear you. No, because if I thought you were full of shit, you wouldn't even be on the show right now. We would never even talk at lunch. You know, I was shaking your hand and met you. And, and who's that asshole? Oh, he's an actor. What an asshole. Right. No, it's it's um, uh, and I, I, I think I want to come full circle on this is that every firefighter that I know, every cop that I know, every soldier that I know. Is an actor. We're all fucking actors, Maddie. We're acting our way through life. My role could change today when something happens. Right. I there's lots of times where. Listen, when, when, when COVID happened, two days in and we canceled 15 classes and I looked at what the, the, the value was on the books, 
I went, that's not sustainable. I will lose my company if I don't figure something out. And that day was a horrible day for me. I wasn't the, the Instagram Tony. <laughs> I was like, I was like sitting in my office, like thinking, looking at shit going, fuck me. I was scared shitless. When I got up to go have dinner with the family, I was an actor. Hey, dad, how's your day? I said, it's horrible. I we're going to lose everything. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. <laughs> right? But you know what? Oh, go on, go on. Yeah. When I spoke to my team and they came up with a lot of the online pivots, but they came up with it because I showed up as a leader, but I wasn't feeling like a leader that morning. I was feeling like a fucking loser. And this is an interesting thing, very spontaneous, very organic. We're all fucking actors. And we all deal with uncertainty and we all deal with 10,000 no's, whether it's, whether it's uh, dating, we're married now, attempts to have sex with our wives, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, whether it's acting or do you, know, do you know how many deals, how many times I try to push, do you know how many no's that I've had where I'm trying to explain to somebody why they should study behaviorally based self-defense no like they don't say it like that but right but go ahead what are you going to say no, no, oh, where, my, where my mind went when you said that about what happened to you during covid is you know the tagline on the podcast is failure is opportunity and that comes from my dad when i was in high school playing sports he would always say failure is just opportunity in disguise so that doesn't fit on the back of a t-shirt so it's failure is opportunity so when that's the whole, you, you know, at, at where my mind went when you just said that is like, that's what drama is. That's what we watch when we go to the movies, when we watch a TV show that we, when we're playing a character, we're not watching. We don't give a shit about the third act when the, when the protagonist gets everything that they wanted, their brass ring, that's the end of the movie. Then the credits roll and then you get out because there's nothing to learn there. Right. We go to the movie. If you think about like, you know, if you think about a biopic that's about some famous person in history, it's it's the struggling years that we're mostly watching. You know, it's the it's the overcoming. That's where character is developed. That's where true essence comes out. Your true essence came out during covid because that's who you are. You're the guy who figures out a way to get through it and you pivoted and now as as i said when we sat down you got the clearest zoom camera i've ever seen in my life i could see like you know little uh yeah, right. pores on your face with right. that thing but you know you pivoted and and that's that's your character so you were stressed in the moment maybe for a little bit from the outside if someone said to me you know let's say just some stranger goes taps me on the shoulder during COVID and go hey are you worried about Tony Blauer? I would have said, based on what I knew of you at the time, no. And from the outside, I'm not. If someone tapped you and said, Is, are you worried about Matt Del Negro? I don't think you would, I think you would have said, no, he's gonna be fine. But right. on the inside during COVID, I'm going, fuck, I right. was on a great job. It's done, I don't know if it's coming back. I'm back now in New York and hearing reports of Brooklyn where I am with, you know, COVID cases spiking and I'm hearing Jurassic World was shut down and whatever, you know, these TV shows. I don't know if we're going to get through the whole season. I don't know. I right. don't know. I can't control that. So I'm not thinking about it. I'm in my apartment busting my ass on the backstory of this character and going through well, this. this is, let me share something here. That is, that is one of the, 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 the secret reframes in my fear management. Like, like, like workshops and, and seminars is the idea that the, the thought of, I wonder if this will get canceled, is an unsolicited thought that pops in your head that's stimulated by a tweet. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're on set uh, doing a reading and someone goes, you think we're gonna make it through? I heard that, no, no, no. You can't not hear that. And the second you, I don't even know if you ever heard my um, full, movie metaphor for fear. I don't know if, if that if that rings a bell, that that the false expectations appearing real, one of the acronyms we use. 
is the movie in your mind. And it's a movie where you lose, you're getting fucked up, you're in pain, but it's a movie in the future that's immobilizing you in the present. And, and the full expression of this is that you're the director, you're the producer, you're the screenwriter, you're the casting director, and you're the star, but you've cast yourself as victim number one in your movie. And it's a horror movie. Yeah, right? yeah, you've told, and, yeah and, I know. I've heard you tell me right, this. Right? So, so, but it's an interesting thing because what you, when you say, I don't even think about that stuff, what you're actually thinking, and forgive me for putting words in your brain and your mouth, is you're not listening to that. You do think about it. And then you go, this doesn't serve me. I don't, this is a distraction. And that's a very important distinction on this call because this is a no fear podcast is we can't control the thoughts that pop in our head because it might come from a tweet, a news broadcast, a press conference, somebody whispers in your ear, you see something, your brain goes, oh, what does that mean? Then you need to go, oh, is this serving me or not? Can I give you one better yeah, than that? Please. So, so here's the thing. One of the temptations when you're on location and you're in a cool neighborhood and I'm near the river and all that, it's like, you want to go explore the neighborhood. I've walked around. I listen. I got these, you know, I've been listening to books on tape of master acting teachers and just kind of getting myself just kind of primed. And then I come back here, but I've actually taken that. So I have listened to it, I guess. And actually I talk about reframing in the book. And I guess this is one of those reframes I'm going, wait a second. This is great. I shouldn't be going outside so much to be cavorting around with everybody. Right. Cause there's a bunch of people in Brooklyn, not wearing masks. And, and I, it keeps me in the apartment books, you know, nose in my script, working on the stuff that I know I need to be working on. So I'm going, Hey, this is a gift. I've got, you, you know, I've got forced quarantine study hall. This is great. Right. And, and nobody's around to, you know, fuck with my time. Although I'll right. get emails and texts that I have to ward off, but it's, it's actually, it's actually even a, a good thing in some ways. And, and whether it is or not, doesn't matter. I see it. And I, then you it's know, good. I put it through my brain and I make it a good thing. That's and that's that stoic philosophy of like we can't control the thing, we control ourselves and how we think about the thing. Yeah. Have you speaking of the 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 uh producing it you know the movie metaphor, have you heard that I think this is great, the Tony Robbins thing, and maybe he got it from someone else, but where he talks about a memory and like you know, empowering memories or other and he talks about actually thinking of it like you're shooting a film, but taking that memory and shrinking it and looking at it from a different angle. You can look at it from up top and make it small. You can lower the volume and how you can, you can, because fear can, can really right. enlarge Amplified. something yeah. so that it crushes you and you can, you can use your mind to see it in a different way. And you're like, wait, or, or even just when that voice in your head says something, that critic in your head says something to you, giving it a, a voice that's like a, you know, high-pitched voice and you're like what the fuck are you talking about get out of my right. face and then right. you- i hadn't heard that it's good yeah. Yeah, yeah dig it man hey so i know i know you got a hard stop soon so i want to i want to kind of like uh, um any anything else you want to share uh about the book or messaging uh about the book i think i think we 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 made it super super clear this is this is a book about life and resiliency and dealing with uncertainty as told through i mean like you could have been a tailor or a short order cook or a taxi driver. The book is good or it's not good, right? It doesn't matter. And if, and if, and if you're judging it going, Oh, he's an actor, he's an asshole. Well, you're probably an asshole for saying that. So, right. Right. right? I, I would right. say the only thing you, you, first of all, thank you for having me on. Thank you for talking. Thanks for reaching out when you saw that promo video, which I kind of want to talk about for two seconds. Yeah, please. But, it was great. Cause there's a lesson even in the making of it, but the, but the, you got the gist of it. I would say, if anything, you you know, just in terms of the format, it's not a memoir and it's not a self-help book. It's kind of like this hybrid of, it has stories, but it also like the titles are like getting started, you know, perseverance, reframing, stuff like that. So, it, right. it, and at the end, I do the three takeaways that I do on the, on the podcast. So there's like kind of a, 
kind of an educational, I guess, component to it. There's also stories, a lot of them, I'm the butt of the joke, you know, they're just stories of me, you know, literally getting pancaked in, in football in high school. You know, it's like, I, I don't tell, you said in the beginning, is it stories that make me look good? It's like, if anything, maybe the opposite. And then I also right. have- That's good. good, that's endearing. Um, but, uh, oh, in terms of the, the video, I was really happy, not only you, but, but the publishers kind of went, went crazy about the video. And I, this is why I'm psyched. They said a couple of months ago, look at these Amazon author pages. Now I've never written a book, as you know, they go, these are samples of promo videos for the book. And first of all, I was like, there's promo videos for books. <laughs> so they sent me like, you know, they do a lot of business books. So they sent me like five samples and I looked and they all looked very professional. And at first I was like, oh crap, this looks really, you know, highbrow. And, and I just looked at, and I just kind of like, I had that little moment of like, shit, can I compete? And then I kind of just flipped it again. And I was like, fuck this, I'm an actor. Like I'm gonna come up with something better and it's not gonna try to fit into their box. I'm gonna do something that's mine. And I came up with that, the theme of it, which is me calling all these VIPs that I know and getting basically shut down by them. Cause that's right. the whole thing. And at the end I get a yes. But even in the making of it, I shot a version of that where I was driving around in, I have a Jeep and it happened to have the top down and, and my hair because of COVID is this long and all this stuff. And I, and I, I did it and I cut it myself, sent it to my buddy. Everybody was like, oh, it's really funny. It's good. I sent it to my buddy. He goes, it doesn't represent you, man. It, it, this is not you. This is you in COVID right now. This is what you look like, but that's not you. And I redid the whole thing. I took a lot of time to, to do it, to cut it, and then send it to my editor. And um, I was really happy with the extra time that I put in because it had a personal, it, it had a personal quality to it that I think people are responding to. So it, it was very nice when you gave me that call and very nice <laughs> to be on here. So thank that you. It's cool. So uh, full name of the book and, and when, when is it out and how do we get it? 10,000 knows how to overcome rejection on the way to your yes. It's through Wiley and Sons Publishing. It comes out October 27th, 2020. You can pre-order it on my website, 10,000knows.com. There's a section for the book. Uh, that's 10000nos.com. Um, you can go to my Instagram at Matty Dell. It's in the link in the bio. You can pre-order it there. And, um, you know, you can... Nice. You can yeah. Dude, I love it. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you. And, uh, and uh, whatever, we'll see you at the top. Thank you so much, Tony. I really, really appreciate it. I hope, uh, I hope the audience responds to it, your audience. It, uh, it, 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 the ones that do will get a lot from it. And, that, and that's all that matters, you know. Uh, yeah. and, and, that's, and, that's, and that's part of the messaging. It's, uh, if they say no, that's one of their notes, right? So uh, exactly, they, they missed the point. But uh, it won't be my first no, exactly. Right, right, exactly. Okay, buddy, you be safe. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Okay, say hi to Jesse. All right. Well.